At the end of every semester, I get emails from students on the verge of losing thousands of dollars in scholarships because they are just one percentage point away from the grade they need. What they don't realize is that there were several simple things they could have done during the semester that would have increased their learning, improved their test scores, and established a foundation for their future coursework. And most of the times, these things don't even take any extra time, and they may even save you study time. For this first one, some of you will feel tempted to skip because it feels like it's only for the students who are struggling. But bear with me, because there's a way you can use this simple technique to accelerate your career faster than NFTs made and lost a ton of money. I learned about this strategy my freshman year. I started off my undergraduate career thinking I was going to major in engineering. So I immediately jumped into some difficult physics and math classes. Every week I would hit a wall in the problem sets and I had no idea what to do. Luckily, the physics and math departments had labs where there were always TAs available to help with homework. Anytime I struggled, I went to the lab and my problems were answered. But I also ended up getting some of my worst grades in those classes. When I considered switching to economics, I signed up for the hardest introductory class. If this was going to be my major, I wanted to be prepared. But I also remembered my first year in those hard classes and knew I needed to get ahead of my struggles. Fortunately, the economics department also had a lab for TAs. Every Friday, I parked myself in that lab and worked on my homework. I didn't know if I was going to have any difficulties that week, but I wanted to be around those TAs so I can fill in any gap that arrived. That's where my first point comes in. Top students use TAs a lot more than you think, and certainly more than the students at the bottom. In fact, when those students email me about what they can do to raise their grade percentage point to keep their scholarship, my first question is how frequently they use the TAs. The answer is always never. Now, you might be thinking that this is only for students who are struggling on the homework or worried about the exam, but you're a stronger student and don't need that kind of help. Yet there's still a way that meeting with TAs can supercharge your career faster than Thor grabbing Stormbreaker. When I was in that lab, I didn't know yet that I wanted to get a PhD, but there were a lot of TAs in that lab that were thinking about PhDs. I heard them talk about the math requirements for getting into PhD programs, and one even mentioned a professor he was working for. When I decided I want to get a PhD, I started taking the math classes they recommended, and I even approached the same professor to see if he was still hiring. I'm still in touch with some of those TAs today. And that's a secret that a lot of students don't realize about TA. There's a reason they became TAs. They are top performing students who are further along in their education. They can point you to the opportunities that will benefit your career. And if you're lucky, they might even be cute. Seriously, we have good friends who met in a TA lab and are today happily married with kids. TAs can change your life. This next tip is going to make your study sessions so much more effective. It's going to reduce the amount of time that you have to study for exams, and it's going to help you learn the principles deeper. Even better, it will make you smarter than Spider-Man. All you have to do is overcome the karaoke problem. I am not a good singer and I am not a fan of karaoke, but the few times I have tried, I make sure I pick a song that I know really well. The kind that I might sing along to in the car when no one's with me. But every time some word pops up in the song that I had no idea was even in there. That's because I never try to sing the song without the original playing with me. I've never tried to learn the lyrics on my own. And so when I hit a part I don't know well, I just mutter through that part. This problem is so common that Miles Morales experiences it with his favorite song. You use the music as a band-aid to cover the parts that you don't know. The same thing applies to your studying. A lot of times you get into your textbooks and you read and it feels like you know these things. It's like the music comes on and you're singing along in the car, but then you go to your exam and it's time for karaoke. 
The questions look familiar, but you can't answer them because you never sing without the music. If you want to overcome this problem, you need to study without the material in front of you. You need to have some sort of study routine that prompts you without giving you the full material. A good technique for this is to use flashcards. Flashcards force you to recall the information and if you're honest with your answers, they reveal whether you know the material or not. Best of all, if you pay attention to the ones you answer easily and the ones where you struggle, you can redirect your effort towards the material where you struggle. That means your study effort goes towards the highest marginal returns on your time. This next tip is going to make writing essays so much easier and it will help you retain information across all of your classes. When you implement this, you'll create your own GPS for knowledge. One of my biggest regrets is looking back at my college education and not having much to show for it. I can look through my transcript right now and while I got A's in most of my classes, I can't tell you what I learned. In fact, even in graduate school, I read hundreds of papers and I have very little memory of what happened in each of those papers. But that's changed a lot lately. If you ask me about a paper I read a few weeks ago or even last year, I can go in and show you exactly the insights that I had. I'm reminded regularly of these insights because when I read a new paper, I make a new note and I connect it to the ideas that I had in the past. So one of the big things that I've learned lately is the importance of having a note-taking system. I take insights from papers, books, and lectures, and I put them in a central location. I not only enjoy putting them in a central location, but finding some way to connect them to the other notes I've taken in the past. For example, if I read a paper on improving schools in developing countries, I look for ways that those ideas connect to other papers. Then if I want to write my essay about effective interventions in schools in developing countries, I can go to my notes and pull those notes up. I see all these things that are already there and I see connections I've made over time by working on this in a consistent manner. Instead of working from a blank page, I have a page full of notes and I just have to clean it up for an essay. The thing is, even after learning all of these strategies, you still are going to struggle understanding economics. That's why you need to watch this video where I tell you to stop trying to understand economics and instead do something else. You'll find it will transform how you learn.